Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for the worship. Thank God for uh, Joshua uh, that uh, who played. You know Joshua, where is he? I just saw him. Oh, yeah. We know the song, but we really quite couldn't sing like you, brother. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we thank the Lord for you. It's like, uh, you know, there are many who come just like you and I. Many who go overseas for work. Their hearts cry because they can't serve God in a way they want to be fixed and they want to be, uh, they know their hearts and they can flow with that tribe, if I can put it that way, you know. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God that you were discovered by Michael and uh, Melissa, uh, you know, even though you're doing that. And thank God that our DNA, spiritual DNA, got locked in. And uh, may the Lord use you more. Yeah. This fella is preparing to get married. How's that? <laughs> praise God, praise God I want to thank the Lord for all the testimonies Amen Thank the Lord for the worship uh, Where's uh, Anthony? Anthony disappeared He was uh, worshipping God uh, Today is a uh, loose yes. Amen. Amen Now listen, there is something about Your job in worship that I want to tell you Your job in worship is to show the excitement yes. It is to show the involvement it is to show the expression. When you get, express yourself, either you are dancing, you are jiggling, you are falling on the floor, I don't know what else you want to do, that spikes the fire. And you know what happens? The Lord comes down. And that's what we want. Because you find sometimes you have a disconnected group. You have a worship team that is so excited, but they see they are leading a team who is so, a, a group that is so afraid to worship God, they are like stone. They don't want to worship because like God has to touch them. Got to move left. Got to move right. Got to move left. And then they respond to it. It's the angels have to. But when we get involved because we are in the Father's house, there is a celebration. Sunday is a celebration of the Lord. Amen. Why are we celebrating? We celebrated... We are celebrating what God did last week and we're going to celebrate God in advance what he's going to do next week. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So today is the pivotal point that connects our faith in our hearts. Amen. And so when you put your hearts together, then the worship team comes in. They know that they are involved in a church that wants to worship God. Right. A lot of people tell me, you know, in my previous church, we can't do that. That is previous. Why are you giving previous testimony? Amen. Now, since you can do it, show me what you can. Yes. So now we find out it's not about the church, it's just about you. Your body doesn't move for anything else except for the world. Yeah. When the world comes up, you smile, whoa, you scream. But when God comes in, do you realize that everywhere Jesus walked, in the city, in the town, in the temple, in the synagogue, in the marketplace, there was such a rowdy group screaming and welcoming and praising Jesus. Hello? Yes. Did you see that? So there is a time to worship God in that way. Then there is a time to receive Him as His King and His holiness where there is stillness in our hearts and as we worship. Amen? Amen? Yes. See, one of the, I received a lot of texts um, last week of the Tagline in the whole sermon that your wallets will not be empty. Many send a text to say they are so blessed to hear the tagline. Today's tagline, the worship leader, um, Anthony said, you drink from the cup that never runs dry. Amen. Then you had another tagline in testimony. Uh, when uh, this, uh, Raphael, just do what the Lord wants and he will do the best. How is that? So you find a lot of taglines. I want you to pay attention to taglines of faith. Amen? Pay attention to it. Don't just slip on and get, oh yeah, another testimony. No, every testimony meant something to that person that gave them the courage to walk forward. Yeah. Do you know every time when people come forward, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Yeah. They are not natural. They want to give testimony that blesses people. Amen? And I remember one couple, not this church, another church that I was past. Oh, in this church, people show off. They give a lot of testimonies. Ah. Yeah. So the following Sunday, I preached a message. 
how to show off more. <laughs> let God do the big things and let's show off more. Amen. And those who are dull in faith, let them get upset more. It's okay. You see, there are people who have lost their heart, lost their faith. They have become dull. You know, when you are dull in your husband-wife relationship in love, when you see someone else hugging and kissing or holding close and affectionate, you get very uptight about that. Ah, you know, they are showing. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Pray that you will be like one. Yes. Yes. Admire them and pray, God, make my family like that. Yes. Amen? Amen? Okay. I was woken up by the Lord at 2.30 in the morning. And I knew in my heart, uh, okay, the Lord wants to speak, so I was praying quite a bit. I'm not going to speak about it this morning. The Lord showed me how to, the ways to enter into the presence of God. We do it casually, and we know normally we can do, but there are seasons when we wait before God, how to enter in, in His way, so when you enter into the right way, you're following the right direction, you'll find the door, correct? Whenever our children are lost, if they call you, you say, okay, where are you now? I'm here, I'm there. But if you're following the right way, you will find that door. There's no way you can go lost. Hello? And so I was very blessed, but I wanted to ponder some of the areas that I've not thought about because of the vision that I saw. Uh, why did he make it that easy? Why is my mind working it difficultly? And so I'm trying to study the, God, uh, the Lord's Word, and when it builds it up, and then I want to share with you. Amen. We are studying, uh, we will finish this week uh, with the work of the Holy Spirit, the ministries of the Holy Spirit in our life. And I also believe that as we talk about the triune God, when we talk about God the Father, when we talk about uh, the Lord Jesus, and we talk about um, the work of the Holy Spirit, suddenly faith levels goes up. Do you know that? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Do you know when you talk about God, faith goes up? You don't, talk, you don't need to really talk about other things. You don't have to talk like the world. You don't have to pump up people's pressure up. You just pump God's name up, and He said, I will draw all men. Amen. When you talk about God's holiness... The sin that is hiding within us will get locked in. And God's holiness will fire it down. Somebody say amen. amen. And the way to come close to God is to let God be lifted up. And I've noticed that we have been talking about the ministries of the Holy Spirit. The number of testimonies is increasing. Faith level is rising up. So I want to thank the Lord for that. Continue believing that God can do miracles. How's that? Yes. Probably I was thinking we should uh, have a Christmas outreach in that... Uh, Hibachi store. <laughs> we have to talk to your boss, man. The church come and do an evangelistic worship. How is that? We don't want to kind of fire you from your job. <laughs> you don't know what God can do. Somebody say amen. 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 John chapter 14. Turn with me to John chapter 14. This week we will finish with the ministries of the Holy Spirit. Then next week onwards, during the Christmas uh, month, we're going to study and meditate the life of Jesus uh, during the, uh, his birth, circumstances, and the name of Christ. What it means to us. And I, I, I just like you, I've been a Christian long enough, uh, 37 years now, and, uh, and I've been preaching for this long for Christmas. I never found one boring sermon about Christmas at all. Or at least I didn't preach a boring sermon. Every year there is something different when I look at God. Every year there is something different He shows me. And that surprises me, you know. It's not that I want to preach differently. But I say there is so, so much about God. So why go back to the old sermons again? I can't even remember what I preached a few years ago. I've got 19 years of sermon collections. Uh, in fact, no, no, I should say 25 years of sermon collections. But I, I don't bother going there because the river of life never runs dry. Amen. 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 And today I think um, Anthony was also um, uh, saying this phrase over and over again, let the rivers of life flow through. Amen. Do you pay attention to that? 
Remember, our first ministry name was not Rivers of Life. It was called Youth on Fire Outreach when I started in 1987. Youth on Fire Outreach. Every year, that's everywhere we went, that was the ministry tagline. I walked, um, when I started our ministry in 97 in uh, Australia, in fact, 98 in Australia, for after many years, but in 1999, I was fasting and praying, walked down the street called Albion Street in Queensland, near Brisbane. Um, near Brisbane, there's a street called Albion Street, just before I reached to the uh, uh, Baptist Church. By the way, okay, let me tell you, the revival ministry that started and uh, kicked off my ministry in Australia was in a Baptist church. Uh. And that started the fire. It's supposed to be one evening service on Sunday because... Morning, it's conservative service. Evening is a more charismatic approach. The service that's supposed to be one week lasted seven nights from a country church of 20 people, full house, hundreds over, and spread over weeks after weeks, and then it became annual camp meeting type. And then Baptist churches started to open up the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to... Somehow, I think maybe God gave me a grace to minister to a different platform. So I want to be thankful. So walking down the street one afternoon, and the wind of God became visible to me. It moved from the right to the left, and the wind was like a ball all over. And the Lord's voice came out of that wind, and he spoke to me. He said, I wanted to change the name of the ministry. It was 1998, but in 1999, I published it. The Lord said, I wanted to change the name of the ministry. So I asked the Lord, uh, what is the name, Lord? Then he said, you shall change it as Rivers of Life Ministries. He said, I will bring you throughout the nations of the world, and my river will flow into everywhere you go. His life will flow. I don't have to manufacture his river. That's his job. My job is to be where God wants me to be, and this river will flow. Amen. So I, all this brought a lot of memories. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that you can also have the Lord's name in your junctions of your life, yeah. in the intersections of your life. You can have God write certain things in your life that you will remember the junction points. Yeah. Amen. Those are the, the uh, milestones that you'll remember at this age, at this time, God showed me something about him that I will remember forever. And then we can walk that way. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 14. We're talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is inside, what are the things he does? And we have been looking at different things. The ministry. So verse 15 says, John chapter 14 and verse 15 uh, we're going to read until 17. Okay? One, two, three, go. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Now, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. Looks like the promise, isn't it? He will be in you. So this morning, my, my, my title for the, my, my audio guys always wonder what title. The Holy Spirit and our partnership. Amen. Amen. Finally, I gave the title. Look at that. Usually Anthony will pray and seek out his own title. He puts his own things. <laughs> now this is the challenge I want to um, uh, uh, encourage each one of us to think about it. Now this happens regardless of your age. Okay? The Holy Spirit has been sent for one main purpose. To live with you. To dwell with you. To live in you. To be on you. To dwell with you, to live with you. Are you following? Yes. So he's not sent as a guest. Amen. He's not sent to visit you only. 
We pray for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But He's sent to live with you. And so, my introduction I want to think about is this. You know, some people are only good to smile during Sunday service, they endure for two hours. Some people can live with them for one day. The moment you wake up in the morning, the opinion and the trouble starts. You know, she went to the bathroom. She didn't put the cap on the, on the toothpaste, you know. She left the towel just like that, never put it up. What kind of family they come from? Oh, we, we drag everybody when we make comments like that. Oh, you know, uh, uh, she made a uh, coffee and she left the teaspoon there and just forgot about it. And we pick up all these little things. Some people can only last three days in a church camp. After that, problem starts. <laughs> we say, we are, this is my brother, this is my covenant brother, this is my sister, praise God. But three days, it will last. After that, our personal opinions, behavior patterns, and what I like, what I don't like comes into play. Are you with me? Yeah. But in the military, it's absolutely different. They come from the same walks of life, but when they come in, man, there is such a military order, there's such a discipline, everybody follows through. Everybody knows what they're doing. And they can stay together for two years, fight together, die for one another, and still be a unit without any issues. Because order is being instated. My question this morning for all of us to wonder is this. If the Holy Spirit has been sent by God to live with me and in me as a partner forever. He's not going to run anywhere. But I'm supposed to learn to host him. I'm supposed to learn how to live with him. I'm supposed to learn how to partner with him. Now that becomes my challenge. Some people just can't live together for, for one hour, man. You, uh, something about the negativity just comes out. The moment you know a little bit about them, the negativity comes out. But look at the Holy Spirit. Now this is, say the word Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I pronounce it so clear, nice and loud. Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, what is the first thing the Holy Spirit does in your life? He makes you holy. Because His name is Holy. And the second thing he'll always does, if, if anybody does, oh, why do you need the Holy Spirit? What does he do? I'll give you two things to tell you. Tell them. Number one, he makes you holy. That's provided you want to be holy, right? Number two, he will make you spiritual. He's a spirit. For you to communicate with him and live with him, to understand him, to welcome him, you need to operate in that dimension that he lives. Not some up there in the universe, even though he's there, he's God. There is a secret chamber in your heart. I want to show you today because that's what the Lord showed me. Are you ready? Yes. I'll show you the secret chamber that is inside each one of us. So the Holy Spirit is given to us and the Bible says the particular nature of him. There are many aspects of his nature, characteristics, but there is something about him that is given to us. And that nature or that aspect of him that is given to us is called the spirit of truth. Why do we argue with God? Because he brings the truth of heaven. He brings the holiness of God. And so if, if there are no truthfulness in our dealings. Some of us, we have businesses. Some of us, we have things that we involve where there is transaction of money. And if there is no truthfulness in your dealing, this spirit of truth will have a tuck of war with you. Because he is the spirit of what? Truth. Are you going to kick him out? Sorry. I'm willing to accept Jesus as my savior, but I don't want the truth of the kingdom in me. There are a lot of people who live like that. They struggle with truth. Some businesses are built in corruption. Some positions are built in corruption. And so when God comes in, they, tr they struggle with that integrity. They struggle with accountability. They struggle with holiness. How can I continue being in this job if the Holy Spirit comes? So there is only one thing to do. Number one, don't receive Christ. I'm not ready to let go yet. Have you heard this kind of testimonies? Yes. I'm not willing to change yet. Why? Because they know when this holy God comes in, I must change. And so I'd rather reject him. Or 
I welcome him, but I don't give him permission to change me, the spirit of truth. So he waits that he lives inside. He brings the truth of heaven. He brings conviction when you are hearing God, when you are worshipping, Holy Spirit, welcome. And so we are afraid to welcome him. We are afraid, oh, you know, God, you know the amount of sins that I've done. You know how dirty I am. But you know, when you welcome him, he embraces you. Somebody say, and we cannot handle that love. We cannot handle that unconditional love. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this. It applies with husband and wife. It applies with uh, parenting children. It applies to any relationship. You cannot expect God's unconditional love. Number one, he's God. He can do it anytime he wants. But when it comes to your turn, you give your love only conditionally. It comes in husband-wife relationship. Sometimes you've got to unconditionally love without conditions. And sometimes our children, oh, but he, he needs this line. Oh, yeah, those are disciplined lines. But your love is unconditional. Why? Because I've received from the Father. He could have kicked me out any time. Are you following? You want God to freely love you, but you find it so difficult to freely love anybody else. Why must I love them? What if God just kick you out like that? You'll be gone. As you have received, so we shall give, right? The Bible says, when even when it comes to loving God, God says, he that has been forgiven much will love much. That means your worship to God has a direct relationship to your repentance before God. As you are forgiven much, you will love much. So now I must learn how to handle this spirit of truth. This Holy Spirit, would he be able to host a divine partner, a Spirit of God who is holy, who knows you more than yourself? The Bible says he knows you before your words can come out, right? But he just sits down and listens to you anyway. He enjoys the worship. Now this is my challenge. I want to give you my challenge. Are you ready? Okay, three people said yes. Yes. Four, seven, six, yes. yes. Gary Bryan, what do you say? Yes. Okay, he's recovering, but okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is living inside us who's not perfected yet. There is a level of corruption in us. There is a level of worldly contamination in each one of us. There is a level of lack of holiness to the level of God. Definitely in all of us. We fall short of the glory of God many times. Yet He's living inside us, holy, yet not corrupted by us. How is that possible? That's the challenge today. Where is He living inside me? I sin against God in my actions. I sin against God in my thoughts. I sin against God in my mouth. I sin against God in my eyes. I sin against God in my ears. My complete being, that is a level of sin and contamination. Where is he living? Because people say, if I can look at your friends, I know who you are. Did anybody take a peek inside my heart? There is a friend living inside me. Hello? There is a friend who's living inside me. He's waiting for me to welcome him more. He's waiting for me to allow him to take over me more. His job is to guide me into the spirit of truth that leads to God. He's not just an assumption. He's God. Amen? I want you to take that challenge today. Throw away religion that says, well, that is God, we know, but this is God. I just, you know, was reading a little bit, just a a, a search a little bit on what are some of the men of God who have said things. Usually I don't 
look at Google, I don't search because I've read a lot of books, so I know where, what, and all that. But sometimes, time to time, you need to know some of the current things. Did they say something after what I've read about them? You know. So I read about Billy Graham. He said his life and ministry changed. We're talking about 1950-something or 40-something when he made the Holy Spirit as his partner. And when they did an interview, just one of the last few messages before he died and went to God, he said, I'm not afraid to die. I'm waiting for the day I'm going to see my king because I know where I'm going to go. I'm not afraid. I'm looking forward for it. You can only say that when you have the Holy Spirit in you. When you have made peace with God. You have lived a full life of fruitfulness. Amen. Hey, hello. Ah, oh, that's Billy Graham. No, I wanted to say that's going to be me. Would you say one, two, three? You're going to live life full. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to be obedient to whatever God told you to do. You're going to lay an inheritance to your children's children. Okay, Amen was here stronger. This speaker was a little bit out. Let me see. You're going to lay. Treasure to your children's children? Yes. That means you're not going to die broke. Amen. How? I don't know. That's not my job. The Lord says he will lay the treasure. Amen. You got to walk right with God. Amen? Amen. I told my children, I'll give you all my books. They say, I'll sell it and make it money. <laughs> what? <laughs> I told them it's more, more worth than money. Yeah, right, daddy. <laughs> so now you know the Holy Spirit is in you. Now he's the one who guides you to wealth. He does everything in you, but I must know how to live with him. He's going to be in me forever. Amen. Somebody say forever. He's not going to run away. He's not going to be my guest you can choose whether to keep the Holy Spirit as your guest in your heart or he's going to be your partner living with you in your heart. No matter what you do, no matter how many sins we commit, he will never be corrupted because he's holy. The hardest part of conviction is with all the holiness of God, we do stuff that grieves him. That's the hardest part. Where does he leave? There is this secret chamber. And the chamber is revealed to us in Proverbs chapter 20 and 27. Where does this Holy Spirit live in us? Look at me to Proverbs 20, 27. The Bible says the spirit of man is the Lamb of the Lord. Or King James Version will say the candle of the Lord. Searching all is in most parts, innermost parts, the spirit of man. So there is a chamber called the spirit of man that is inside you. It's a spirit part of you. It is not your natural heart. If it's a natural heart, then when your arteries got problem, the Holy Spirit is struggling already. If there is a blockage of cholesterol, he's also struggling to breathe. So he's not in that natural heart of yours. Even though you said God spoke to me in my heart. Uh, that's a reference to the spirit heart, not the natural heart. The natural heart can respond to God. No worries about that. But now we want to find out where is he residing? How is it possible I can be so corrupted and yet he remains holy? And that is why we have this ability to ask for forgiveness even though when you sin against God. It can be any area of your life. Can be relationships, can be areas of finance, can be area of integrity, can be area of personal holiness or cleansing. Impurity, purity, you can name it. Oh, you say, well, I don't sin against God. I want to tell you what the, the wife of, uh, uh, you know, Mrs. David did. You know who's Mrs. David? David's wife. Remember playing Happy Family? Whenever I ask you who's Mrs. David... David's wife, easy to answer, okay? Don't struggle. <laughs> she said, oh, What kind of a king who danced like that naked? The Bible says she despised him where? In her, heart. In her heart. She didn't even open her mouth and say it. 
She didn't dare to say, first of all, the guy is a king. She despised him inside where? And the Lord heard that and caused her womb to be barren forever. Do you see what happens? Because that is the part of your life the Holy Spirit stays inside. There are things He will forgive. There are things, but there are, ex- there are areas of our life to give us kind of a wisdom. He creates consequences. My brothers and sisters, there are areas you must never touch. Are you with me? Don't despise the anointing. Don't despise the men of God. Don't despise a person who's touching with the things of God because you don't know how close they are. You just don't know. We all, we, we, we can behave like a donkey outside, yet before God you are so close and crying and weeping and praying. God's mercy always shines and handles the donkey part of our lives. <laughs> are you following? I will not do that. You are not God, but he's God. He does that. He didn't die for anybody. Jesus did. His job is to get all animals inside the, uh, the barn. <laughs> Are you following? That's the cute part of God. I'm still struggling with this aspect of understanding. He is so holy, yet he's living inside us without getting corrupted. He's your partner, but he, your thoughts of corruption never corrupts him. You get all twisted up in your opinion, but he never gets twisted up. Because you say, look at your friends, you'll know who you are. Uh, well, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't become like you. Only you can become like Him. Somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Say in a way that the fellows who are watching online get inspired. One, two, three. Thank God. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So therefore, the Holy Spirit of God is so holy that I can rely on Him till I die. To keep me in check. He is the spirit of truth. You can never get afraid of him. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Be afraid afraid of demonic spirits. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of coming close to him. Don't be afraid of allowing him to take hold of you. He takes hold of you and looks for opportunities to take hold of you. When? When you are hearing God's word, like now. Open your heart. Allow the word of God to come. Don't receive, ah, you know, the word of God. If you keep on doing this, there is a demon inside you straight away. The Bible says it's only the demonic spirits will resist the spirit of truth. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. It's like there is something binding you down. Change it in Jesus' name. You can never be afraid of the Holy Spirit because he's holy. So he looks for ways to touch you. Then he looks for ways to touch you and melt you down when? Worship. When worship is going on free, music, it elevates you, it opens your heart and you start crying. And that's the moment of change. Usually the people that you have offended, somebody offended you, it it start melting. I will not change, I will not change. Because the fire is increasing. Somebody say amen. amen. I want that fire, you know. Sometimes it's difficult to get letting things go. So the fire comes and melts. Ah, at the end of the day. What a heck, bro. Like, oh, phew, did I say that? Sorry, cut, cut. <laughs> because sometimes you realize our offenses are not worth the love of God. Amen. It's not worth the love of God. Amen. Because offenses will follow you inside your secret chamber. Do you realize that? Mm. Offenses will never stay outside when you go into your prayer closet. Yeah. It follows you in. Hey, hello, you don't come in. Sorry, you brought me in. You better keep me there. Only donkey carries offenses. (laughs) If you're not a donkey, then drop it. Don't bring the load inside God's presence because offenses follows you. Are you following? You cannot tell offenses, stay out, I go and pray first. No, it will follow you and God will deal with that. Let it go. Let it go. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. You don't know what my husband did. Yeah, I know. You let it go. (laughs) I am God. But God, you don't know. You don't know. How many of you have prayed like that? God, but you don't know. You are talking to me. You know that, right? (laughs) Some of us have such a free play when you're praying because he's not answering you back. So you want to do all the Hollywood drama when you talk to you. 
God, you don't know what it did to me. Oh, you don't know how deep it was. I know. Okay, can you stop it? I know. You know. Okay. That means the next time, don't say it. He knows. Enjoy your time walking in restoration. Allow God to change you. Touch you. Live above the pain. And find things that what God wants to do in your life. Somebody say what? I'm not going to pass down hurts and pains to my next generation. I'm going to pass down love, peace, and joy. Oh, but I've never experienced it. No, experience it with God. You have this time, right? You don't know who my father was. I don't want to know. That's your father. (laughs) I got to know only my father. You don't know what is the pain when a father doesn't talk. I've been through that. I don't want to blame him anyway. Probably he's listening from heaven. I never talked to him. He's telling the whole world. I never talked to him. Yes. Take it note. But you know what? If he knew Jesus earlier, probably he would have done it well. But I translated that to the Father God. To keep talking. I want to give you a scripture that challenges you. Are you ready for the challenge? Okay. The Bible says... We'll jump to 1 Corinthians, but before I go there, I'll give you a challenge scripture. You know, the Bible says he knows our thoughts, yet he's not polluted by it. And that's a scary thing to know. He knows your thoughts, pattern. He's not polluted. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9. I'm going to show you something there. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 Verse 9. Are you learning something? Yes. First Chronicles 28 verse 9. And you, Solomon, my son. I wanted to put your name there. Put your name as uh, Jane, my daughter. Put uh, Randy Carter, my son. Put your name there. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and a what? Oh, come on. And with a what? You see, when we serve God, you must have a willing mind. Don't make it sound holy, you know. I have to serve God. If not, nobody does it, you know. Don't cause attention to yourself. Bible says, when you serve God, do it with a willing mind. If not, you're kicked out. God is looking not for hearts who are willing to serve, but minds who are willing to serve as well. A willing mind. A lot of people who are anointed, but they're not willing. You tell them, oh, but I know I got this, right? Oh, but I know I got that, right? Oh, but thank you. Next in line, come. Because God is not just looking for your heart. He's looking for what? Have you, have you spoken to people when they can help you, but they're not willing only? But you know, I want to help you, but you know, but you know, but you know, you know that they are resisting you, so you just walk away. Now God is also looking for people Who's got a willing mind? It's not enough to condition your heart. I'm willing to serve anytime. God, you call me anytime. I'm willing to do. He calls you 11 in the night. Oh, but that's sleeping time, right? <laughs> Didn't you open your big mouth and say anytime? I'll take you at your word. Hello? God will cost you in your word. Someone breaks down, car breaks down at 11 o'clock in the night. Your church fellow, your friend calls, I'm not sleeping, I'm sleeping now. You know what time is it? A puncture doesn't know time. Are you following? God tests our hearts. He wants to see whether you will respond anytime. Because troubles can come anytime. When you say you are on call with God, then he wants to see whether you are willing. Willing. I've got doctor friends, man, they sleep with their phone. How can I preach to the fellow don't sleep with his phone? That's his job. People's lives are counted on that. Their phones are on all the time. I, I spoke to a, the surgeon in our church in Singapore. Man, how do you just wake up 2 o'clock in the morning and go for surgery? They have been trained up so many times when there are accident victims in the middle of the night when they've got to perform an immediate surgery, they will call 
the surgeons from their sleep, they got to wake up, come, and immediately they are able to do it. Can, can you? Some of us, by the time you wake up, by the time you get ready to pray, it's like moving an elephant from the back. <laughs> oh, I just oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Oh. By the time you get warmed up, the problem is over. The fella died. <laughs> the elephant is still there in the back. Hello? Why is so difficult to get warmed up? Why? Because your flesh is that thick. Your soul is not conditioned to respond to God. You need the right songs to warm you up. Who is God here? Not you. <laughs> Why must I make you dance when God's flames must come and dance on us? Are you following? Hello? Yes. Tell your neighbor, pastor is making sense today. All right. You got to know God wants a willing people. And that group is the difficult one to get. More so when you are so blessed. When you have many more reasons to stay in the home. Because a lot of people are willing to do a lot of things when you are single, when you are broke, and you got nothing else to do, I am willing for Jesus. Now you have a house, you have a dog, and you have a car, you have children, you have a cable TV 24-7. You got the happiness going on at home. You want to stay all the time at home. You see, when your house was broke and it was divided, you wanted the church family. Yeah. Hello. But the Holy Spirit is living inside you all this time. You made a vow and you made a covenant with God. Lord, if you'll fix my life, I will help to fix other people's life. You made a vow and God honored you. And now when your home is happy, you forget to come out and fix another person's troubles. Are you, are you listening? This is what dedication is all about. This is what consecration is all about. When you make a vow, don't reconsider it because God took it seriously. You don't have to reconsider when you have made it seriously and God honors that. Amen? Oh, you know how late I have to come back? At least we've got a house to go. What are you complaining about? You know, people are funny, don't you think? When it's hot, they'll turn on the AC, air condition. When the AC is on, they pull a blanket. They want to feel the warm. Why? <laughs> you don't know how to help these people. <laughs> God is too hot. He doesn't change the weather patterns for your comment. Think about it. What the Holy Spirit does. So now, he, he wants to have a willing mind. You know, the scripture is so powerful, you can stop anywhere and preach more. Hello? Okay. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and every what? Mm. Look at that. He knows your thoughts, but yet he's not polluted. He said, if you seek him, he will be what? He will be found. So therefore, God is not hiding that he cannot see him. He's hiding, waiting to be found. He's playing with his children like that. Hello? Ah, come on, seek me more. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting to be found. I'm not hiding permanently. I'm just I'm teasing you for a while. He says, if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will what? Can you handle that? No, no we, we prefer the first line. He always playing with me. But if you throw him out, he will cast you. Oh, but we are in the New Testament. New Testament doesn't mean you can trash him down. He remains as the Holy One of God. The blood is there to patch you up. Praise God for that. But you still have to honor him as the Holy One of God. Amen? Amen. Now I want to give you a challenge scripture. Now, so I, Therefore, now he lives in me, he's not corrupted. He lives in me, he remains holy. Now I know the secret chamber of my heart is a spirit man heart. The spirit man, he's dwelling inside. I'm going to give you a very challenging scripture which will challenge all the ones who have grown up in the Lord and to the mature. See, God has given me a grace not only to minister to the young in the Lord, the one who's growing, but also to fathers as we are gathered here. To those who are mature, I want to challenge your heart this 
morning and I will finish on time. Don't worry. Praise God. I'm in the Christmas mood, okay? <laughs> Every day is Christmas. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. So wait for the catchphrase today. Are you ready? Yes. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11. I want you to pay attention. Only a few verses from 11 to 16. But it's a worth the read. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach us as we go along. Now. <clears throat> verse 10. Maybe we can start with verse 10. That'll be good. These things God has revealed to us through where? So there are many things that God wants to reveal, but the channel of which is through the Holy Spirit. So if you block him, all the revelation will stop. Correct? You don't allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, that area stops. What are those areas? Look at verse 9. Go to verse 9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen... No ear has heard the heart of man, imagine, what God has prepared for those who love him. So now God has prepared a lot of those things he has already prepared for us. One of the things he has prepared, the Bible says, he has prepared a table in front of your enemies. Do you remember? Psalms 23. So he has already prepared many things for those who love him, but you won't know what he has prepared because eyes cannot see. Ears cannot hear. The heart of man has not conceived. It speaks of intellectual knowledge. It speaks of revelation knowledge, which is the heart. Then it speaks of sense knowledge. The heart cannot perceive it. You find three levels of knowledge being overridden by the Holy Spirit now. He said, I have prepared all these things to my children, but that is only because, uh, uh, will be communicated through the whole Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And where is he? Inside. I just must talk to him. Lord, I'm going through this. What must I do now? I'm stuck. What must I do? I need to pray. How must I pray? How can I approach God? What is this passage? You can talk about anything, man, even including your vocation. You want to fix stuff in your workplace? Ask him. There's nothing he doesn't know. He's just waiting for you to talk to him. Don't consult him as the last one. Consult him as the first one. Amen. It's okay to talk to your friends. Hello. Depending on the Holy Spirit means, doesn't mean it must produce pride. No one can teach me, only God can. Good to know that. But God uses the wisdom of your friends as well. Yeah. I want to tell you this. When the first time the Lord, I was able to hear the voice of God um, uh, audibly, the very first time that it took place in my life, he started to speak to me from 1985. I had an open vision, so on and so forth. But 1986, there was a breakthrough in my prayer life. And then from that day morning, 1986, I can't remember the date now. I remember the year, 86, when I heard the audible voice of the Lord. So in those times, I used to write, in those days, we write prayer notes and prayer letters. Uh, I, I used to write to a prophet who's a saint, who's a, who's a spiritual father, okay, for prayer needs, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Mostly it's all about God's call on my life, what am I supposed to do, stuff like that, okay. Then one day I decided, since God is already speaking to me, why do I need to write to him? He can talk to me directly, which is not wrong, correct? It's not wrong. But when I said that, for one month, the Lord didn't speak. I didn't know. Why? I was struggling for one month in prayer. Finally, I had my breakthrough. And here again, I'm struggling. I can't hear him. He's quiet. And then one of the end of that month, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to know, as much as I'm speaking to you, I will always appoint people over your lives that you must learn to hear and don't let pride build up because of my presence. So there is an independence level. There is also a codependence level. 
your God will say yes what to do but the application of counsel can come through your friends and the rele- uh, relevant people with that expertise God will give them favor in their heart to counsel you or teach you or to instruct you what to do if not you know what God is telling you but you won't know how to do it that God reserves Oh, but God spoke to Moses in the wilderness. Yes. You too, take a flight, go to Sinai, wait there. He will tell you what to do. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you quote Moses, right? That be in the same situation. You cannot quote Moses and don't want to be in that situation. I want to fast like Jesus. Please go to wilderness of Judea. The moment you look, one look, no, never mind. My house is good enough. (laughs) There is no water, no toilet break. There is no shade. It is pure wilderness. You will not know how to survive because we are from the city. You need to be a rough, rugged terrain wolf, bro. You must know how to survive that. They know how to be there. And Jesus was there for how long? 40 days. And 40 days. anything to drink? None. Did he dig a well since he got a lot of time? No. Find water in the wilderness? No. His body is so conditioned. He's like a desert fox. He could survive it, man. You for one day, you drink water like a camel. (sighs) You store all kinds of bags everywhere around you. No, you will not survive it. On the third minute, you're... I need water. I need water. (laughs) If you can survive one hour without water, praise God. So now, the Holy Spirit stopped working. So that is why I want to encourage you that God speaks to us. In many ways, and it is through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, for the Spirit of the Lord searches what? Everything or all things. Everything, all things, all correct. And even the what? So God not only searches you, He searches everything else. And also... He's got the excess because he's got even the depths of God. Now, I want to question you. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Hey, are you learning something? Yes. Now, for who is he doing this database search? For who? For you. He wants to search out all the things God has prepared for you and your family. Pastor, you're lying. I don't think so. Look at verse 12. Before we come to verse 11, I want to jump one. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Did you say that? Did you hear that? Therefore, in Jesus' name, I reject everything that comes from the world because I did not receive that spirit. The Bible says, but the spirit who is where? From God, that we might understand the things. Please complete the sentence. So the Holy Spirit is now searching the database of the world, the things that God wants to bless you with. He's searching everything. He's also searching you. What are the things that is going to block your destiny? What are the conditions? Hey, listen. Some of our destinies are blocked not because of a demon. It's simply because of your attitude. There's no demon involved now. It's you. Sometimes you realize that your attitude is more stronger than a demon. Because a demon, when you rebuke, it leaves. Your attitude doesn't change. You change for five minutes. <laughs> After that, it starts back. Even the demon is so frightened to cross the line. You don't. Now you tell your neighbor, Pastor, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> Before you get a punch. <laughs> Well, if there is a camera, please point at Vicky. He say, I will never tell my wife that. <laughs> is everything okay? <laughs> hey, this is the Holy Spirit, you know. I realized that God was not only working in my life to make me as a holy guy in my life as a single at that time. God is also working in my life how to be a husband, how to be a son, how to be a father to my children. How to work on the different aspects of my relationship. Oh, you know, you know, brother Larry, you don't know what it is to be a father. That fellow is a father, you tell him you don't know. (laughs) 
You don't know what it is to be a grandfather. He is a grandfather too. You don't know what it is to serve God. He's been serving God all his life. People know everything. But God is conditioning you to receive what the Father has prepared for you freely. Say the word freely. Freely. It doesn't cost you anything. You must learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit. I didn't know God was conditioning me for 12 years for ministry in America. I didn't know that. I didn't know that God was conditioning me for Western worldview even when I was 26 years old when I went to Australia ministry. For 10 years, God was conditioning me. My job was not to question God of my future, is to obey instantly every time he tells me to do something. And he said, go and take counseling courses, I just did. The only person in the planet Earth that I asked when I took my first counseling course was Angeline. I called her. She believed in me more than anybody at that that juncture of my life, you see. She said, I know you can. God has anointed you for it. Please go. And that one word, you were waiting for that affirmation. Because prophetic people sometimes are very nasty when it comes to prophetic affirmation. Are you sure? Did you pray? Did God really tell you? How did he say? What mood did he speak with? How was his tone? You create so much of doubt, you will never do it. You know why? Because you are lacking in spiritual affirmations. You will never know how to get things done. Oh, but God spoke to me. Then show me you can do it. God always gives you parenting affirmations. I am with you. Walk through that journey. You see, I was pastoring some rascals in Malaysia. <coughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Sometimes you pastor good people. Sometimes you got to pastor rascals who came out from bad life and bad attitude. And they came out, you see. And while I was pastoring them, you want to make sure that they don't drag you down, correct? That's, that's because you, you have already done it. You don't want to walk in. in. And I found these fellows who I was pastoring, five of them very particularly, that they were struggling to walk up with me. But it was not a struggle for me to go down with them because I've done it before and I know how to come back. So I told them and I made them a promise. Whether you're down in the valley or you're up in the mountain, I'm going to walk with you together till Christ will be shaped in your life. And we journeyed for 10 years and we planted a church. We went around the nations touching hundreds and in fact became thousands of life together, just that five guys. They wanted to know if I dragged them, if they, they want to know if they dragged me down because of weakness, will I fall with them? I did. But I had the strength to lift them up. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we are so holy and so washed, we forget the smell of sin. Mm-hmm. If my Savior is still walking among the sinners, if the Holy Spirit is still smelling the stench of sin in our own lives, How much more I need to walk the journey with every one of us. And that's the commitment for disciple makers. And that's the commitment when you are a mentor. That's a commitment that you have to walk through that journey. When you smell sin, don't tell others. That's the thing it is. You got to just keep it quiet, man. Because you're able to wash your own clothes. Don't forget where the sin came from. You got to wash your own clothes. I remember I went to pray for a lady in uh, Singapore at the time. I was the closest living to that house. This lady was demonized in the house. The drawers, uh, do you call it a drawer? Kitchen drawer, right? It just came, it comes out by itself and the things will fly out from my house. You call it Portuguese, you call it whatever else you want to watch. What? Poltergeist. Pol- Poltergeist. Is that American? Yes. yes. Show off. I never saw them. I never saw them. The, you want to see? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Things flies, man. When I went to the house, it was messy. The pastor friend called me, Stephen, this is beyond me. Can you please go and pray? I went to the house. She was waiting for me to come in. Houses were all open. I mean, it's a long story. Give me the last part of it. 
prayed, delivered. She was completely delivered when the church baptized. Okay, other stories. But when I came back, I was driving back home. For 30 minutes, the spirit of lust, uncleanness, all the heaviness, the stench of sin, everything that came out from her was now onto me. I was praying all the way. And the Lord said, yeah, your job is to go and dump it into the river of life. Amen. Throw it in the sea of redemption. Yeah. You got to throw it there. If not, they come back to her house, you see. Why did God send me? Because I know where to throw the rubbish. <laughs> if you don't know where, come with me. I'll tell you where. Oak Grove Recycling Center. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know. You must know where to throw the rubbish. Don't complain about how, you know, I went to pray. You know how deep the sin was. You know how heavy I was crying. No, it was not you. The Holy Spirit did it. Amen. You need to know where to throw. When you throw it, don't talk about it. Don't go home and tell your wife, you know what I did today? No, 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 no. She will become demonized after you telling. <laughs> she can't sleep throughout the night. Oh, because you throw the rubbish to her instead of throwing out to the sea of redemption. Hello? Don't discuss about church matters in front of the children. Don't throw onto their head. Throw to the sea of where? Three people know it. Three of where? Sea of? Yeah. Redemption is where forgiveness is. God forgives. He covers. He hides. He throws. He conceals. Amen. He got to know, bro. If not, you will never last in the walk with God. The Holy Spirit is inside you. You will never last for one year. You must know how to condition this. You must know married life is a life co forever committed. The Holy Spirit is your partner. It's going to help you out. Dr. David Yonggi Cho, the, the, you know, he just uh, passed off a couple of years ago. The, the church of uh, um, uh, a million people in South Korea, Seoul. He wrote a, a fantastic book that churched, uh, changed the church growth uh, concept of America. Okay? And uh, it's called Holy Spirit, My Senior Partner. He wrote the book and he said he speaks to the Holy Spirit. He tells him this, he tells him that. And uh, when the whole, uh, his wife had a baby... He tells his wife, I give you a house, I give you a baby, you handle everything, I handle ministry. But her wife became very sad because the fellow was never at home. Yeah. Then his mother-in-law told him, I want to talk to you. He got so frightened. <laughs> Everybody gets frightened when the mother-in-law wants to talk. <laughs> I don't know why. He said, you must learn how to honor your wife because the Holy Spirit gave her to you. He said, from that day, his marriage life changed. When his marriage life changed, his church began to grow. Amen. So, I want to ask you today this question, my brothers and sisters. What has God given to you freely? You are struggling with a lot of things, but He has given to you freely. Love, grace, peace, directions. The Holy Spirit is searching things out for you. He searches everything for your destiny. He's asking you to have right thoughts and right patterns in your life so that your children will be established in the right way. You've got right value system of the kingdom, what is right and what is wrong, so that I can teach them in the way of God. Please never use that silly phrase, whatever. Right. You allow the world's spirit to come into them. Right. You're giving permissions of the spirit of the world to come inside. Yeah. Are you with me? You know, have you heard of this pastor's kid syndrome, PK syndrome? Have you heard of it? No. You heard of it? Yeah. Those who don't know, blessed are thou. You heard of it? Many people know, oh, you know, I'm a pastor's kid, so. Oh. Have you ever heard of a doctor's kid syndrome? No. Never? Okay. Have you heard of a carpenter's kid syndrome? What about, uh, uh, what is the fellow's name? Uh, what is the fellow, the Microsoft? What is, uh, Bill Gates syndrome kids. What about the millionaire kids syndrome? No. You heard of these phrases? No. Because they don't exist. But people pull out the pastor's kids. Yeah. And they created a syndrome and acknowledged it. And children hide under the word to give permission for their disobedience. 
Oh, you know what? I'm a pastor who keeps so. Aren't you not blessed? Aren't you not that God made a covenant because of your parents? Your life is being blessed. God's favor will come and shine on you. Every parent, every child who is here, I want you to know God's extra grace and favor is on you because your parent is walking right with God. And it's not just about you. Children, listen. Are you listening to me? It's not just about you, you know. It's about your children. When the parent walks right, their grandchildren will be blessed by God. How? I don't know. I'm not a grandparent yet. A lot of people are calling me, introducing their children to me. This is a grandpa. Huh? <laughs> I can receive it freely. I can accept it. Angeline is in denial. No, not me. <laughs> God has given to us freely. I wanted to find out what are the free things God has given to you. Your prayer life will not be dull if you can find out what are the things freely God has given to you. You keep on telling God, God is not blessed me this way. God is not blessed me that way. He is not giving me money. Do you know even how to handle money he gives you? He wants to know, you see. He has given to you freely. And when you know there is no limit, what will you do with that knowledge? Now the Bible says, see, follow me with my track. Are you following? Yes. Now we impart this in words not thought by human wisdom, verse 13. But this must be thought by the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is living inside you, but he wants you to become so obedient that he can teach you, you see. Now, teaching takes time. You must come to a cultivate a, a, a walk with God that he can teach you. He can teach you the simple things and the big things. Many times when he starts teaching you small things, that means he has big things in store for your life. He's already had big things in store. So he teaches with the little things first. He teaches us honesty and integrity. He teaches us accountability in the small things because he has big things in store. Somebody say amen. amen. God is working things out in our lives. Then he's teaching us another thing, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. In other words, if you are not spiritual, you will never get to know the spiritual truths. You got to operate in the realm of the spirit because in the spirit all your blessings have been released. Amen. Your healing is released. Your breakthrough for your family is already released. Wisdom for your children is already released. The children, whatever their struggle is going through, God has released those breakthroughs there already. I'm telling you, even in this church, this church, this area is stained with my tears. When I've travailed with God, Angela and I, travailed with God with our children, the things that you may not know, you see, as a parent, you're crying and let your tears water down the feet of Jesus. Breakthrough has already been given. I must know how to take that breakthrough in. Amen? No demons are going to hold me behind. Sorry, enjoy. I'm going. Amen. Because my spirit is more hotter than the touch of a demon. So be on flame with Jesus. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to you pridefully. I'm telling you what God is in our lives. He's that part of him is still holy inside us. I show you a scripture. Second Timothy. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I will take away probably another 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yes. Look at Second Timothy. My brothers and sisters, I, I, feel, I feel a strong anointing of breakthrough this morning. I, I know that God is going to touch many of you. Yes. Why don't you start uh, this Christmas with a powerful spirit of breakthrough in your life? Okay. Second uh, 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 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 or verse 9. For which I am suffering. Okay. With chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not what? The word of God is not what? 
You see, you are going through problems, but the Word of God is not. The Word of God is living in you and is full of breakthroughs. So don't drag the Word of God inside. Use the Word of God to set yourself free. Somebody say, I want you to understand this. You can be in change. You are going through that problem. You're going through that pain. And you're praying and you're crying. But God is reminding you, you are in chains, but the word of God is not in chains. So use the word of God to set yourself free. So that's the scripture I'm telling you. The demons can be holding me back, but the word of God is in me. It's going to propel me forward. I want you to understand the power of God that is so freely given to us. You may say, well, I need to work on my savings. I need to cut down my uh, expenditure. I need to cut on this and cut on that. And we eat less McDonald's or less of the children uh, playing time or blessed time or whatever not. It is nothing to cut down. You need to upgrade your faith. Upgrade your faith. Don't downgrade. The, this is the lesson I learned. In 1992, when I started my pastoral ministry, the moment you downgrade, the enemy will tempt you to downgrade further, downgrade further, downgrade further, until you come to your starting point again, all again in your life. When you keep up there, you're not going to downgrade, then God will keep pulling you up, keep pulling you up, Keep pulling you up. Amen. Amen. It's time to climb up. The Lord brings change. He empowers you, strengthens you. And I want to finish you with this last, even though there are many things I wrote. Verse 14. Bible says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 1-4. 14, First Corinthians, okay? Look at the first line. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Therefore, the more natural you talk, there will be an inner resistance against the things of the Spirit of God. It will be a built-in DNA resistance. God wants you to respond to the Spirit of God in you. Whatever that works against your mind, overcome it in Jesus' name. You talk about territorial demons, do whatever territory, but this is my territory in Jesus' name. You do your business there. I just want to tell you, Christians have forgotten. Listen, can I just add on something about spiritual warfare? A lot of Christians are just sometimes lying to us. They think the whole world, they can overcome everything. No, the devil is here for a time given by God. You cannot take the entire earth away. You can't. It is given by God, permitted for them to do what they are doing. Jesus said, a little while more, the accuser is going to come, right? Yeah. So you, you, you can't take everything away from them because they have permission. Your job is to extend the territories of God's kingdom. Amen. That's your job. Amen. Your job is to fight it out. And take it back what belongs to you. Ah, oh, this is my, since your grandfather uh, was given to me. Yeah, right, whatever. I'm taking over in Jesus' name. Amen. That right is given to you by God. Amen. You waste your time smelling the generational demons. You'll never stop smelling them. Because there are millions of them. There are legions working on. Which one do you want to stop? Which one do you want to name? Which one you want to confess for? We are all so caught up in confessing the sins of the fathers. When are you going to stop confessing when Jesus has paid the price? Amen. He didn't ask you to confess. He asked you to pray before him, release them, and you keep going forward. Somebody say, Amen. my brothers and sisters, you have a short lifetime only. Don't waste time doing the wrong things because someone else thought you today... As your shepherd, I'm teaching you the ways of God. Amen. You want to see God's redemption operating in your life. Regardless of how young you are in this room, and for those who are watching online, God will start working on you as young as you can become. Right. You must have a... 
this limitation. Break away these things that I've brought down. If not, the demons will get you distracted. Which one will you, you know, how many of you are here? Legion. Okay, good to know. Out you go. Name every one of them. You know how many thousand have to come out? Which one will you? They will come out because they are spirit. You are a normal guy. You'll die there listening to them. Don't let them distract you. Amen? Amen. Don't exercise your spiritual muscle and start admiring yourself. Look at the redemption of Christ. Today I pray this power of God's word will set you free. Amen. You don't have to confess anything. Jesus did it for you. Amen. Now you got to walk in what's freely given to you. The Bible says God will give to you as long as you are in the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. And let me finish the last two scripture. The spiritual person judges all things, but his, his himself to be judged by no one. Verse 16, for who has understood the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now the Bible says, you have whose mind? The mind of so that mind remains uncorrupted. I have the mind of Christ, uncorrupted. I also have the Spirit of God in me, uncorrupted. Many times when you say, I, I want to give you this prophetic warning to all of you. When you say the Lord, you better be mindful what you're saying. He can, I didn't say that, you are dead after that. There are many times we allow our hearts to say what he is saying. He is God holy. If you say, you know, uh, pastor, it's your wife who said it. I will call my wife and ask, did you? You'll be afraid if I can have a reference, you see. We use God because you know many times he's quiet. <laughs> but when the prophets talk, he will say it back. No, I didn't say that. We all must build that integrity in our lives. So that we will know how to discern when God speaks. A lot of people have asked me. I wish God can give you, give me the address of the home to buy, just like the way God gave Angeline and I. I don't know what to say. Of course, it's the mercy of God. But my answer in defense was this. First, learn to obey God blindly. If you know how to do that, then he will tell you which one to buy. You don't even have to go, bro, did we do the inspection? Yes. Does it have faults? Yes, but that was a house given to us by God. I didn't say, oh, it's not nice. He told me to fix it up if it's not nice, but that's the address, bro. Go and stay. Can I have another house? I did. The agent said, you guys are from Singapore. This is country. You may not like this house. I have another house for you to buy. And she went to Moss Lake. To look out for houses for more younger generation to live. You ask Angeline what happened. The anger of the Lord rose up in me. And I was so calm like a cucumber. Not bad, huh? Suddenly I became hot like what? Come on, give me a phrase. Come on, complete, complete. Hotter than a match. <laughs> Hotter than a match. I wanted to sound brilliant at the moment. <laughs> she told me to go wait for us 30 minutes because I'm still in Singapore, you see. It is 2 in the morning. She's, I, I, I will give you FaceTime. You'll see this is the house. You know, young families will live there. You are young. You come from the city. And the Lord said, I didn't ask you to look at that. So I told that sister, please don't waste time. I don't even want to see. No, no, just take a look. Sorry, no looking. If God is not there, what is that to take a look? Yeah. Yeah. But many of us, we like that, you know. The lust of the eyes will want you to take a look. <laughs> Never mind what's looking, nothing wrong in looking. No, absolutely. Tell your wife that nothing wrong looking at another girl. <laughs> just looking, just looking. Tell her that. <laughs> your eyeballs will come out. <laughs> So what, if God says no, I don't want to look. Amen. I'm happy where God has placed me. Yes. I'm exactly in the center of God's will and I know that. Amen. So do you. Yes. Because we have the mind of? Right. Can we all stand up together? Come. 
Guys, I just want to give you five good minutes now. We're going to call NASA heaven. <laughs> Count down, give you 10 seconds for your rocket to shoot up and reach to God. How is that? Hallelujah. You have 10 seconds to take off. Don't dilly-dally and start slow pushing the elephant. The only elephant in the story is you. Throw the elephant and go up to God like a rocket. Five minutes. You got 10 seconds to count down. Worship. You make sure we see angels, you know. There's <laughs> no pressure, but... <laughs> Let's go before the Lord tonight. Right. Come on, this take morning. a moment. Take a moment. Come. Holy Spirit, we're going to welcome Him. He's the agent given to you by God. He's the one who will bring you a direct access to the Father. About your children, about yourself, about your family. Let all the troubles of this year be gone in this month, today, in Jesus' name. You want to walk into the new year 2024 with the hand of God holding you in. Blessings in Jesus' name. Freely given to you in Jesus' name. God, I'm so shy to welcome the Holy Spirit. Don't worry, He brings you in. You got 10 seconds to count down and let's enjoy. Holy Spirit. Today I pray and stand together in faith. As a church, we want to stand together in faith. Believing God for another person's breakthrough. We stand together and pray for the breakthrough of marriages. Of our children, sons and daughters. Their struggles. They are facing a challenge that even us, we did not face when we were young. We pray for the struggles of single parents. We pray for the struggles of financial lack, work shortages, unemployment. We pray in the name of Jesus today, dear Holy Spirit, you're already living in each one of us. Now guys, would you say to the Lord, lift me up, Lord. Speak to me and lift me up. You have all the time you are inside me. Though unholy as I can be, that the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Today there's going to be breakthrough for many families, many husbands and wives. Breakthrough for your children. Breakthrough for your daughters. Father, I especially pray for our daughters in Jesus' name that they will be kept whole they will be lovers of God Lord their wombs will be protected in Jesus name keep them holy and wholesome in their going and in their coming if you got a daughter would you lift up your hand and allow the Holy Spirit to touch your family because the Lord keeps saying the word daughters take a moment right now and if you are a daughter yourself, commit yourself, God help me to walk with you, to keep the fires burning up. Today is the day of every one of us. Freely God has given to you. Freely. You don't have to struggle for your breakthrough. It has been given to you, but it will be revealed through the Holy Spirit. And so God opened my ears. Open my eyes, open my heart, that I want to commune with you. You are my divine partner. You are my breakthrough partner. You are holy and divine who is given by God to live inside us. 
Jesus was given to the world, the Holy Spirit is given to you. So we take and honor you, Father. Come on, just for a few more moments, honor him. Every blockage is to break through for healings in Jesus' name. Let it come to pass in Jesus' name. Be healed, be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed, be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. For all those who are watching online, receive your breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing can stop you from being touched. This morning is your morning. It's your day. Thank you, Father. You know, parents, listen. One, one of the things God is saying, I, I see someone's house. I see the Lord there. You come to church, but our children don't. You need to bring godliness back into the home, right? Me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Let the Lord take over the entire house. Not just you, your entire family. It's your job as a parent to instill discipline that your children will follow after God. Father, I pray for salvations. I pray for many events that's going to take place for Christmas. Let there be thousands and thousands of salvations all around the world in Jesus' name. Let the kingdom of God be populated in this one month that we've got. Many souls to be added to the kingdom. Many families to be restored. In the Christmas gathering, let relationships be healed. I want to thank you and honor you for this morning. Let the word of the Lord be lifted up. I thank you, Father, as we sang the worship. Let's drink from the cup that ever runs dry. And you are the cup of our salvation. Father, we pray that God's blessings will rest upon everybody today. I pray the love of Jesus will continue to flow into their household. You know, the Lord is giving me the phrase. I want to give it, leave it to with you. The Lord has intended breakthroughs for your family and your life, which even our family and our parents didn't know about that. God has for you. So God can bless you beyond your circumstances. Beyond your understandings. Beyond your familiarities. Beyond your family background. Beyond your family income or wealth, whether it's a million or zero, beyond that point, God can bring you up. So Father, we give ourselves to you this morning and we pray the loving blessings of God the Father, the breakthroughs of God the Son, Jesus, and the leadings of the Holy Spirit and His communion. Be upon each one of us and our children today, tomorrow, and forevermore in Christ Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a wonderful clap offering. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.